Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors trading on margin. Utilizing leverage can carry even higher level of risk that can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market or using any of our software alert products, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal investment objectives, level of experience, and risk tolerance. There is a possibility that you could potentially sustain significant loss. You should not invest any capital or trade that you cannot afford to lose. It is your responsibility to be aware of and understand all risks associated with foreign exchange trading and to seek professional advice from an independent certified financial advisor if you have any doubts. Avoria Prime does not exercise trading authority over your trades. You and you alone exercise discretionary trading authority over every trade and we, i can see right now it's coming right up into a uh, green zone we don't have the 20 pips looks like it's uh one two four it looks like it's about even as far as the range between the uh, red zones and the green zones and with that we're looking at about 50 pip range in between the red and the green and i don't think we're going to have that maybe we will let's see how it looks Sometimes the charts can be deceptive. deceptive. Uh, it's only 21 pips. So, yeah, we'll see how this trade. And let's take a look at the news. See what kind of folders, what kind of red folders we have this week. And this is the uh, FX workbook, FX book. Um, uh, news alerts page and looks like we have something here on uh, about six hours away it's 545 that's going to be the US and that has uh, that's a red folder there so that's it later on this evening at the end of the market and then Tuesday we have uh, an Aussie at uh, well, let's see that's 12:30 in the morning. That's during the uh, London, that's before the London session. And we have another one here with the Japanese yen. Bank of Japan uh, governor speaks. That's on uh, Tuesday. Tomorrow, let's see what we have there. Let's just look at this week here. Uh, so Tuesday we have a little bit with Japan, the Japanese yen, and the dollar is going to be uh, bouncing around a little bit with some sales reports. Don't really know what that means, but uh, it does have some impact on the on the charts. And let's see what else we have here. On the seventeenth, that's on Wednesday. Some Canadian dollar news that may be good for anybody that's in drawdown, possibly. And U.S. dollar news and that's coming in in two days, eight thirty in the morning. There's a lot of U.S. on Wednesday. A lot of, a lot of U.S. on Wednesday. Wednesday could be a day that people are, are in drawdown, either get out of their drawdown or they uh, get deeper into it. Could be either way. And Aussie pairs on the 17th. That's again, that's Wednesday, Thursday. Not a lot going on, on Thursday. A little bit for the uh, Euro. And then on Friday, we have lots of red folders on the British pound. And that's going to be 8 o'clock in the morning. There'll be a lot of, so that's, we'll keep a real eye on that for Friday. And a little bit of dollar news. So, yeah, this is Friday's going to be the big news day you know, on Friday. So, keep that in mind. And let's see. Let's go to the. There was an alert with the British Swiss. There was, it's pretty much already uh, played this way out of it. Uh, there was a little zone right down here. I'm looking at that as being of a trap. Let me go back to our charts. Actually, I've got a question on that pair. Okay. Okay. Uh, ben took that as a strategy three. I'm not sure what the strategy three is. Again, we don't memorize them by number. <laughs> we, we know what they're called. Um, on the M15, he took a buy. He said it moved about 13 pips into profit, and then it retraced almost 40 pips into drawdown. 
So uh, he's just wondering about your thoughts. He's seeing an ascending wedge over the past couple of weeks. So this was a while ago, I guess, that, that Ben took this. Uh, he must be looking at a higher time frame, I'm guessing. Uh, 15 minutes. 15. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. well, let's see. Uh, let's see, British Swiss, British Swiss. Oh, uh, strategy three is the Asi Asian session breakout. Okay, thank okay. you, Joseph. Yeah, we we know what they're by name, but by number, it's a little harder. We don't have them in front of us. And so, this is the Asian session. This is uh, Sunday's. We're into Monday now. This was probably Friday. I'm thinking this was probably Friday's move. That when was, was the twelfth. When did you take this trade? Yeah, that'd be the next question I have to ask. When did you get into this thing? You took it long. I'm taking it. I'm not seeing this was Friday's session, so you would have had to take it on Friday. If, if you're looking at a breakout, a session breakout, that would have been all the way back here on Thursday's breakout of the Thursday session. And that'll be all the way over here. This is the Thursday session. Here's the Thursday money zone. Here's Friday. And this is probably where he did. He probably broke out of it with this one, took it. But you had a red zone right up in, you're going right up into a red zone. And the rest is history here. Yeah, Actually, scared. I kind of like this for a short. It was a contra trend short, but it. Uh, uh, I would have, if I were sitting here, I would have been more apt to take it. Uh, but I would only go. I would have gone for twenty pips. I would have gone for probably you now ten. Uh, on that alert, it was there is a lot of strength to the uh, British pound, and uh, that would have uh, you see it probably it laid it down. He took it today. He said he took it today. Look at today. So you, I don't see a break. I don't see a breakout. Here's the here's the. Uh, there was a session breakout. You're taking this and right up in here. Here's the top of Sunday's. Uh, actually, this would be Friday session. There's the top of the session. Right here's the the zone. Here's the bottom of the zone. Um. And if you took it long, my goodness. Uh, that doesn't make sense to me. You know, I'm not seeing something or it was, you're in a green zone there, you're in a red zone. This Basically this session, this was Friday session. That's the 12th. And that I believe was Friday. And if you're looking at a zone breakout, uh, this would have been a, it would have gone short, but you were in a, in a green zone, so that would have been no go. This zone's been around for a while. The red zone's been around for a while. Okay, Barry is saying. I'm not sure I know. I'm not sure I see what you saw at the time. A lot of green, so that would be a long. You're going taking a long, so there's lots of green. Here's the. Uh, I'm not sure I know what you were seeing at the time. Took five. I do like this one as a short, but it's it's uh it's already pretty much. If I've got, I could have possibly gotten in right here. We got this moving average is hooked over. This one's kind of flat, but it's kind of trying to hook over. We got the close below. Didn't get much of a pullback on this, and it just kind of kept on going. We still might get a pullback, and if it gets another pullback. It may give you an opportunity to get in and maybe go for you know, five or seven pips. Um, I do like the fact it broke through the 200 moving average. This one's hooking over. And the British Swiss. Any other alerts here? US Tech. New Zealand USD. Let's try to take a look at that one. I think we already did that look at that one. Yeah, that's one that we're right in the zone short. And we'll get our zones together here. We'll see how with what our range is. That's the one we said was four and four. So not enough range between. We need we want fifty pips. If we have equal red and equal green, we want fifty pips in between. 
the zone to take it. And so we're going to mark this as an equal here. Arrow up. And arrow down. Morning, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing? Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Matt. Oh, uh, you know, the uh, daylight savings time really screws me over for like a week. <laughs> So there's nothing on that one. Uh, Euro Swiss. Uh, that was a sell. Let's take a look at that one. I don't think we looked at that one yet. Euro Swiss. And that was a sell here. Let's take a look and see what our range is. More red, more green than red. So it's an uptrend. Again, we have a down arrow with an uptrend. That's already a kind of a disqualifier. Uh, up arrow here. So that's going to be, we're in uptrend, down arrow. Here was the entry. Here would have been the entry. Contra, this would have been contra trend. Here would have been the target. You'll find out a lot of these alerts that we get, they're, they're worth taking a look at, but a lot of them we just don't take because they're not in the right spot. And you'll see a lot of that, especially on a Monday. You'll see a little bit better uh, ranging going on on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, but when we're looking at this one, we're only looking at... That's only five pips to the target. That's not even close to being enough. You know, if we get a bounce off of this, then we might have something here. We just got some of the Aussie USD. We'll take a look at that. So that's a no-go. Aussie USD. Aussie USD. 15-minute chart. Check your charts to make sure they're in the right time frame. A sell. Let's see what we have for a range. Uh, four and one, two, three, four. Is there any more below there? Four and four. So that's kind of equal between the red and the green. Now, if you just stick with the basic strategy, strategy one of just you know, bounce arrow go, a lot of times you're, you know, it's your, your probability factor of winning the trade is actually pretty high. If you try That's and get fancy with, true. If you try and get fancy with some of these other strategies that they have, yes, they work, and yes, you have more trades to take, but you're also throwing more risk out there too. And the big thing I always look at is uh, is try to uh, keep your powder dry as long as you can. When you get in, get in and get out again, and then can keep it dry again. Uh, the less time you have exposed to the market, the less volatility you're going to be exposed to, and then the less likely you are to be whipsawed or get yourself in a position that you wish you hadn't been in. And down arrow. Uh, let's see what kind of range we have. It'd be contra trend. Actually, it's... We need to have a 50 pip range in between the two zones. That's 39. That's not bad, but it's less than the 50. And if we were to take this thing short, that's eight pips. You could maybe get five pips out of it. If you have the right strength and right direction, the Aussie is weak and the dollar is stronger. So with the dollar stronger, you would want it to be taken at short. If you were to go with this one, you're below all the moving averages. That's a good thing. You had the blue moving average came up, and now it's hooking down, going short. And you have the winds to your back. Even uh, right now with its being range bound, the winds to your back, and you could go for five pips, but I wouldn't give it much more than that. I would give it, if you were to take this trade, no, that would be uh, out of the, the realm of the strategy. You could give a 22 pip stop. Actually, I'd probably rather keep it up there at 32 pips. You only be looking at five, you know, there's eight pips. Let's see what it looks like on the five minute. And let's see, oh, it's the US. My object's on 7736. Some, some, trying to get some lines on the chart here. Point seven seven. 
then point seven seven. So I would have a stop up, say that zone, target down here. And I say I like the strength to the downside. I like the fact the moving average are, are under. And we have a little bit of a trend line going down and it broke the trend line going up. We have a trend line from here, from this low to this wick, to this wick. On up, it broke this. It broke this trend line. Here's an anchor. Here's a hit. Here's a hit. Broke the trend line. Came back down. Gave us an arrow, and I like the arrow up here, not more more so than down there. This is on a five minute chart. And that time was. Let's see what time was that. And that was early this morning at around 7.10 this morning. Let's find my money zone here. Get my objects list. Get my chart time. And we're going to put this on the today's date. And this is going to be on the 15th. And I'm going to save this with the paste, copy. I mean, if I need to change on my other charts, I have it there. And that should get me right to the money zone for today. And then we can be looking at to see what our overnight high is. This is way up here. Our overnight low is down this area, got into money zone. Yeah, that five minute one would have been actually pretty nice. That would have been the money zone breakout off of the low from overnight low. And you could have gotten a few pips if you're up at one o'clock in the morning. Which I actually was. Really? Yeah. I didn't get to bed till about three o'clock almost three o'clock this morning. Oh my goodness. And uh it's probably one reason why I'm a little draggy this morning. There's twenty three pips. So that's there. That's that one. So I would say if it pulls back, uh, you may get another shot at coming in. But I, I do like the fact that it broke out of this wedge. I wouldn't be going for a whole lot. I'd just be uh, loading up on lot sizes and uh, just go for five pips. Keep your stop a little bit tighter. Let's see what else. Any other questions in the uh, chat box? Well, there was uh, a NASDAQ um, alert earlier that the Mario was asking about, but um, I don't know. Have a look at it. I wouldn't take it personally myself on the five minute. And Pepper's saying that there's a W on the US yen on the 15 minute also. So you ever do you want to uh, text uh, CB and see if he wants to just hang out today or if he wants to come in the room? Okay. I see that he popped in there. Sometimes uh, the panelists would just like to sit back and just watch rather than... But I don't want him to uh, feel like he's... Don't like leaving him out. He's a valuable asset to our group here. Just bring him in. Bring him in? Okay, let's bring him in. I didn't have to text him. He heard you. Uh, uh, let's bring him. Okay. <laughs> I, he's one guy I don't want to feel like want him to think that he's not welcome. There he is. Good morning, CB. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning. Oops, this, I get somebody else in here. Spring ahead stuff is tough. Oh, man, I'll tell you. It's killing me. Well, especially oh, if you stay up till three. <laughs> well... <laughs> I had some other general to it. I see you got to bring, take that one back there. There we go. Well, I've got some accounting work that needs to be done, and it's not going smoothly, so burn the midnight hours.
And let's see, what else do we have? Well, Mario, we just wanted to say on the, the NASDAQ, generally we don't like to trade the indices before the market opens. Uh, kind of, I just want to answer his question because it was saying because there was an alert on it, a five minute sell alert on the NASDAQ. So, uh, and, right, the price point is between the two uh, moving average indicators. Why just move a bit, but it, it's a, a sell. So, I, I don't think. Um, I don't think I do. Yeah, it's got to look awfully good for me to take a NASDAQ or a gold trade these days. Uh, this is probably the W I think that uh, Pepper is referring to here on the 15 minute. Now uh, we do have, we are in an uptrend. We don't have an arrow yet, but we did, uh, it didn't actually come down and actually bounce off of here, off this zone. That would give me some pause. So the fact that I would have liked to have seen it get down deeper into the zone, pull back, and then re get, get back into a lot nearer the zone. But I can see where you're looking at. Here's the straw move down. Uh, we had move up, move down, retest this zone right here. Uh, we can draw a trend line from this point to this point on up and see what it looks like. I do like in the up, upward trend here. And there's the retest of, it is respecting this bottom trend line. And if we get an arrow going to the upside, I'd be more apt to take that one. Let's see what, how much room we have here. This could be an earlier entry. That's four, That's only 15 pips till you get to the red zone. U.S. Yen. Yen is not particularly strong. It's not particularly weak. U.S. is uh, probably a little stronger on the lower time frames. Well, we'll kind of keep an eye on this one. Uh, I said, if we were to go for it, if you were to go and if we got an alert on this one, take a look and see what it looks like on the five minute. There's an arrow on the five minute. And uptrend. We had the bounce. We generally don't take them off the five minutes unless, what well, would you have like two arrows? So we had, I think this one would be okay to take. What do you think, Matt, or TB? So a five minute go for maybe five pips, seven pips on this one? I wouldn't go for the full uh, no. target as usual, but I'd probably, I think... I'd probably, I'd probably split the difference is about 15 pips. i go for seven pips. I I'll like it that. going above the uh, 200 moving average there. The arrow. Yep. yep. And let's go and modify this real quick before it gets me into my trade. You're doing that on the five minute, Al? Yeah. Well, yeah, I just I took it on the five minute. I'm going to be marking my yep. target down here about to oh, 31 from 17 to 31. Let's just go for, let's shoot for 10 pips on this one. Here's my entry here. It didn't get a really great fill. You can see my price is above where the where the uh, entry where the uh, arrow was. So it's got a. Uh, let's see what kind of spread do we have. We have a one and a half point spread. And see, so we are in an uptrend. I like it with that too two uh, arrows on the five minute. So we had the bounce, nice move down, came back, came back up and formed our W, closed above the middle of the W on this for the first arrow, got the second arrow and we have the strength to the upside. So I'm not going for a whole lot on this one. And I'm just gonna go for, no, uh, I'm gonna back this off a little bit to the target of, I'm gonna go for 10 pips. That's 100 on the meter. We we'll go for a 20 pip stop. Basically, I'm cutting everything in half. I still have my stop below this this zone right here. It's below this trend line, and it's in an up arrow, in an uptrend. 
and we have the rejection off of this zone. So I'm okay with this trade. We'll see what it does. And let's get some lines in here. Uh, open trade. And this was at a value about 109.17 ish. 9.17 ish. Uh, that's close enough. And target. One o nine twenty seven ish and stop one o nine right there and then we'll see what happens with this one. Yeah, excuse me a second. I got to uh, un. I gotta mute my mic for a second here. Okay, and we're back live again. Okay, and we have another alert, Euro Aussie. Let's see what that looks like. And that was the buy. And let's see what we look like here. 50 minute chart. Lots of red on the above, so it's a downtrend. Brand new little red zone right there. So this would be a contra trend trade if we were to take it. And your Aussie. Aussie's relatively weak. Hey, Al. Yes. After, the, after that downward arrow there, the last downward arrow, did, we didn't really get a bounce. It didn't, never made it down to the zone, did it? No. Yep. So that'd be kind of a disqualifier right there. It is a nice little run up here. The question is, would it be, is this thing going to come up short of it and right now is good chance it's going to be making lower higher lows and lower highs i like this wick here i like this wick here so we're looking at a somewhat of a downward push on this thing even and we have a downtrend strong wick up rejection came back up rejected this midpoint if we draw a fibonacci on that from the high to the low Came right up to the 62% retracement with the nice big wick. So here's a, and I would be looking at this thing going to the downside. I'd be, so I'd be more up to take this thing short. Euro weakness, Aussie strength. Yeah, I like this better as a short than as a, uh, yeah, this looks like this could be a Fibonacci retracement. Came right up to the 62% retracement of this. Came back down, never did make it down here. And. Yeah, I like it better to the downside than the upside. And this is the one that was my problem trial last week. Hey, CB, did you get an alert on Euro AUD? No, I've done. Neither was, did I. Yeah, there's been a couple already this morning, Matt, that I've already noticed. I, I've been telling Nate, you know, about some of these things. Yeah. The, one other, I mean, not that, you know, it, things are looking pretty good. I don't know if you noticed, but when once the Forex market closed on Friday afternoon through the weekend, 
uh, the dashboard ceased to work until the market reopened last night. I don't know, for at least for me. Yeah, I never even opened it, to be honest. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know, I was looking at like crypto stuff, but you know, none of the cryptos were were populating on the dashboard when the forex market, okay. market closed. That's weird. Yeah, I already let Nate know. Okay. Oh, uh, Judson, yeah, we're talking about uh, something else. Sorry. Which dashboard are you talking about? I'm trying to... Arrow. Arrow the, dashboard. Uh, four. Oh, four, okay. And that must be why it wasn't uh, released this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, uh, Al, that there's a couple of VPN issues still that need to be resolved before the dashboard's going to be optimized for everybody. <clears throat> you know, it's hard. I was trying to help somebody get set up yesterday, and I couldn't tell if it was his computer. that I mean, He has an older computer, and it was, it was like painfully slow trying to get anything done on it. And we rebooted a few times, and I mean, it's, it was slower than I've ever experienced before helping anybody get set up and uh, I can't help but think it was this computer as opposed to uh, yeah that the, that could that could actually be the I think he my guess issue. Just, I'm guessing he just didn't have a lot of RAM in his computer and it was just having to fight with every little thing that we did we finally worked our way through it but boy it was painful yeah it all depends I mean if he's running a potato computer you can only you can only do so much yeah. So I do like this thing to the downside. If we can get a bounce off of, we'll see what happens with this wick right here. We're still on a 15 minute chart. Let's go put this on a five minute chart and see what it looks like. Came up, hit the, hit the trend line, came up again, hit the trend line. Now we'll see if it's going to get a bounce and see if we can break that, come back down, retest it. Then it may still go up higher. Uh, but right now the uh, the Euro Aussie this one has uh, been pretty range bound for the last couple of weeks basically and so I'm kind of staying away from this because I really can't get any real clear direction to it I saw a whipsaw last, last week you can see even overnight on the overnight session it made a new high, made a new low it broke out from the money zone you can see where, let me see if I can get some more lines in here. I like this Fibonacci retracement on this one. But if we look at the money zone, this is right around 154.26. And... Yeah, let's call one point five three eight two. Let's get those two lines in here. <clears throat> it isn't a downtrend, so we would be looking for it to go short. So I'd be looking for it to break through the low of the overnight low. Here's the overnight high. Here's the money zone. Get that one in there. And we had the first breakout was to the upside, which is contra trend, but that's what it did. Probably still have given you 20 pips if you're playing that breakout of the money zone where it breaks through the line of the high of the overnight high and low. You've gotten your 20 pips, barely would have gotten your 20 pips. You may not have gotten filled, you may have had to pull it early or go for a little bit less. We had 20 pips there, and then it came back down and it broke through the bottom. And you're not going to get 20 pips on that side. 
the right now is making lower highs and higher lows. So I've got this little wedge right here. This is a rejection area. And it could come back down and retest this trend line over on this one. So this is the range of trade in right now. But I'll stay away from it. Let's see how our US yen trade's doing here. Yeah, a little bit of a pullback. I'm on a five minute chart. I'm going to go back to a 15 minute. Bitcoin took a $5,000 dump, eh, overnight? Well, who did? Bitcoin. Bitcoin yeah. did? Yeah. All the cryptos corrected all of that. Well, it, yeah. was, uh, it was up to 60,000. So that's uh, it was time for correction. Of course it was. It's back to it where it was just before the run there. Probably has a little lower to go before it uh, it's ready to go go up again, but it's still running right around fifty five thousand, so that's still good. Oh yeah. There's a lot of other cryptos out there that are going to be uh, wants to be looking at. I mean, Bitcoin's the the big mama, so to speak, but. Uh, this probably has the least percentage to go to the upside of some of these other smaller ones that are coming out and into play. Absolutely. I'm not sure which ones they are, how to decide which ones are good and which ones aren't. Euro Aussie buy. Euro Aussie buy. That was. That's on the five minute. That's the same one we've been looking at on that one. How about this British US on the 15? How about that one? We haven't looked at that one yet, I don't think. Uh, British, that's a sell at 139.07. And let's see what we have here. One, two, three, four green, two reds. So we are in an uptrend with a down arrow. Arrows down. No, wait, we went. Oh, this, this is wrong. Uptrend with a down arrow. And there's not going to be enough room to get to the target anyway with this one. But if we can get a bounce, we might get a. Uh, it is somewhat range bound right now. Just remember on Mondays, Sunday night and Monday, the big boys are trying to get their positions for the week. There's 40, 40 pips zone. And you can see that these moving averages are both going kind of going sideways. So this is sort of the mean. So if you get a bounce here, it's more likely to come back up and retest the mean. Or if it goes up here, retest the mean. You can see where it's been sort of hanging out in the middle. Here's a test, broke down, came back up, retested it, went back up, came back down, retested it. So right in this area, you'll see that there's a uh, let's find a shape here, a rectangle. I'm looking at this area right in here. It's sort of like where the magnet is, where every, the price is coming back, it leaves, comes back into it, goes back down the other way, it comes back into it. So you want to have, at least if you take it long down here, you want this to be your target. I mean, it could go up higher, but I would definitely be taking profit off in this area. And that would be... Uh, still be 18 pips. You could probably get your 20 pips out of it if you get a bounce off of that. And if you got a good entry. Any other questions? Uh, anything else you want to look at that we haven't discussed so far?
GB British Swiss and fifteen come down. Yeah, pound Swiss is in a in a pretty big wedge right now. It's been consolidating for the last couple of days, but it's at the bottom of an of a zone, so it, or the bottom of a range, more or less. The it's top of the. I was actually looking at pound Swiss as we were speaking. Actually, I'm going to check out something else here, see if uh, we can get some other signals going on. Uh, let's see. U.S. Let's check out the U.S. Swiss, too. Let's see. Well, let's check out the pound Swiss first. Pound Swiss. Interesting. I got a pound kiwi on the five minute. Uh, sorry, Aussie kiwi. <laughs> My bad. Let me see if I got something here. I wouldn't touch that one. No, I she's uh Let's take a look at the US Swiss. That's uh, got it a uh Wedge alert on the U.S. Swiss. That was a while ago, but let's take a look at it. And that was around 6.45 this morning. So 6.45 in the morning would be... Oh, there's no one. You're old, New Zealand. We're getting some signals anyway. Uh, let's see here. US, I'm going to take a look at Euro New Zealand. We'll take a look at that one real quick, and then we'll go back to what I was originally thinking of doing. Euro New Zealand. Now we're in a red zone, red up arrow. Let's see what the direction is. Down, downtrend. Nothing's wrong on so many different levels. A downtrend, and we are in a red zone. No room at all to go to the upside. Euro New Zealand. Euro is stronger significantly. The question is whether or not it'll break through this zone or not. But you have this is a pretty much an area where price keeps coming back to it again. I would be hesitant to take that one. And Euro Aussie, we already talked about that one. Let's take a look at the US Swiss and see what we had with that one. US Swiss. No. Put that onto the trading view, and we'll look at that one. That was a wedge. That was a wedge alert. And let's go move this over. Keep an eye on the alerts for me, if you would. Whoever's uh, there. And so yep. we have the uh, fifteen-minute chart, U.S. Swiss. We had a wedge alert at six fifty. 6.45 this morning. So I'm going to move this out of the way. 6.45, that'd be right about here. We get the yellow line. There's a descending wedge. So what I'd look at do is I like taking my overnight high, overnight low. That's my starting points normally. And I'm going to draw a triangle. I've got my trend lines. And it was a descending, let's see. Let me take this different direction here. There's the high. Whoops. Next I'll take it this high to this low, to this high. Try and tuck it in as close as I can to where we got the alert, which would be right about there. Descending, 
and we'll flat top the bottom. Let's see if we can just got to break through the bottom of this. Other than that, you're just going to be getting a little head fake there. And I'm going to draw this out so I can catch up these wicks. Here's an anchor. Here's a hit. Here's a hit. Here's a hit. And here's an anchor. Here's a hit. Here's a hit. So this thing, this bottom line is uh, still valid. And we have, so basically right now it's range bound in between. I like to see a breakout of one or the other. And if it can break out, if it breaks out on the top side, you may have a few pips too. we we'll would be looking at this wick as the first target. And that'd be right about there too. And that's only, uh, how many pips is that? Not very many. Uh, ninety-three oh five to. You have about eight pips as at best. You could be be looking at eight pips possibly. If you get a break, come back out, cross bound, retest the trend line, with some strong move coming up. This thing's coming back up pretty nicely. That's. It's still, I still look at it as being more of a short than a long. Let's look at a five minute chart and see what we have over there. Overall, it looks like it's in a downtrend. you will be selling fullbacks on this one. You actually have a little bit more room to the downside from the bounce up here. I would look at this being more of a trap. I took uh, Aussie NZD short. It's not a not a recommendation or nothing. It's just. Just broke the bottom of the wedge. Aussie NZD. Yeah. We had an like... alert for uh, short on the five minute. Well, let's see what you're doing here, Matt. Yeah. Aussie NZD. I'm just going for 10 pips. I'm not going super far. And that was on a five minute, you say? Yeah. But that's pretty tight range. Yeah, it is. No, not as bad on the five minute, actually. Below the moving averages, got the alert coming right down there. Uh, and we are looking at uh, 756. We'll see what happens. Uh, it's not a very strong bounce on the trend line, so we'll see. The uh, the only thing that I don't like about this uh, potential setup is the fact that it's a uh, it's a higher low right now. You know, you get a higher low in price than. Uh, it looks um, like it is. It looks like it's in a downtrend. Yeah. Yep. So. It is what it is. I've got just a small position. Tighter stop loss. That would be your entry one hundred five fifty one hundred seven fifty nine, and target would be down here at. Let's see how much room we have to the target. Sixteen pips. If you're on a five minute chart, I would just cut everything in half and be going for like ten rather than twenty pips. And I'll usually stop at twenty pips rather than forty. That's what I did. 
I just took 20 pip stop loss, 10 pip take profit. Uh, I'm trying to mess around with the five minute. I, I'm actually starting to really like it. So it depends what, uh, depends how we go. I, I still don't have a big volume of trades on that. So. Let's see how our USCN is doing here. See, we're in a little bit of a drawdown. Let me pips we underwater here. Let's do the profit in terms of pips. That's points. USCN. There we're only eight pips down. I said we have a stop of 20 pips, so we're still good. And actually, I would like having to stop below this moving average and maybe below this trend line. I like that a little bit better. I'm going to put an alert on this. I can. Um, and all properties come in. Look at how to do this. What are you trying to do, Al? Put an, put an, an alert on this trend line. I, I can do it on my trading view. Let me oh, just yeah, do that. I don't know what to, how to do it on that. Uh... Yeah, I know. I know it's usually like a email address, email alert, something like that. Yeah. USN. At least get me a, an alert to um, bring my eyes back to the chart if it gets below. Actually, if it gets below the uh, trend line, I like to know about it. My stop's still plenty far away, but if it breaks and retests this trend line, then we may want to be getting out of this trade. We got a little ways to go. Pretty much, if we get a close below this area right in here, it comes back up and retests, then I'll probably get out of this trade. Right now, it's just pulling back a little bit, and uh, then we'll see. I'm still not worried about this. I still like it. That all the Prices are still above the arrow moving average, still above the 200 moving average, still above the trend line, and still some upward momentum. This is just a little bit of a pullback. So we're only down six pips. And you have to give these things. Now, a 10 pip swing is just kind of normal breathing room for a lot of these uh, pairs. Yeah, we like to trade the ones that move pretty significantly. So it is an adjustment if you're not used to just trading. If you're generally just going to be trading your... Uh, your your major currency pairs like your your US based one then it moves in a certain way but if you're using like the pound pairs well they like to move pretty uh quite quite a bit faster than the other ones Got to get the cobwebs out of my out of my brain here. I keep on using the uh, twenty points and ten points instead of uh, two hundred pips and uh, two hundred points. So I'm looking at pound yen short, Al. On the five, it was a five minute alert that I received.
Did we uh, did we lose your audio, Al? Hey. Uh, hey, there oh, we go. There you are. I turned I it off like... so I wouldn't be sneezing and coughing in front of everybody. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. I just wanted to make sure we didn't yeah, lose you. you. I'm glad you told me. Well, it, I am back home again, so I'm not on my laptop anymore. So that's uh, that's a blessing. Uh, okay. Oh, you got the uh, got the headset down the end there. You saw you yeah. saw what I kind of saw of uh, British yen and potential short there for ten. Potential short, and we're looking at the. Uh, let's see, pound yen. Let me see what this does here. I'm still trying to see if I like the 10 pip take profit or the five pip take profit for uh, the five minute. Mm. So I'm just exploring. Let me move this back over here. Get a little bit closer. I love yeah. that uh, arrow makes our lives a lot easier where we don't have to go hunt for trades it gives us some of the best trade ideas that you can get let's see this is the overnight high so basically it's making lower highs higher lows kind of flat top to bottom pretty much hanging right around the mid range from the overnight low to the overnight high it's not really that big of a range I don't think uh no it's like 40 pips yeah 35 pips looks like yeah, room enough to make a trade out of it of course it's... i'm not seeing any real strong direction on it though yeah i like seeing like more of a strong move up and this has been kind of meandering back and forth inside this range it's in the upper part of the range yeah i see what you mean I'm not a big fan of it I see exactly what you there's mean. There's a low, here's a high, higher low. That's just from the overnight, and here's the, where's overnight? So here's the uh, Friday's high and low, which is a lot bigger range. And we'll, to, to take a look at this, see what the difference between, I mean, today's not over yet, so keep that in mind. But from Sunday till Monday, it's this whole going to be this whole region right here. And so here's the high, here's the low. Now, this is a significant bounce off of the trend line, but still in the upper half of the box of, of Friday's uh, session. If we get a break below this and come back up and retest, then it may come back down and rechallenge the lower part. And then we might also have a break from the trend line. I don't know if we can draw another trend line from. Friday's low to you can't take this one because this one's kind of retested it. So we'll take take it to there. And if it can break, if it can break this this trend line right now, this big the, the one from all the way down here. See there's a little bit of conversion point. It would have to break through the bottom of this one. Come back down. I would think it would probably come back down, retest that, come back up, retest the trend line, and then break on down. So I'm going to use this as a significant point over here. And whenever you have these little wicks, it's still sellers came in or buyers came in at this point, and drove it up. And so, it's, so you have to make the assumption there's still some more buyers down in this area. So if it comes back down into this area, and the buyers want to drive it, take it up higher. They're going to start buying as soon as it breaks through this trend line. <clears throat> they're going to start buying it, bring it back up, and then if the sellers can win out on the, they don't take it on down. But right now, here's the trap. Aussie NZD, we got a 15 minute short trade alert, but that's going counter trend. Aussie NZD. Yeah, I don't. There's not Did enough. That, uh, that must be on five minute again. No, fifteen this time, my friend. Is it okay? Yeah, I didn't even get that alert, Matt. You and didn't. I, I see the arrow, but I didn't get okay, it. Okay, all right. Note that down. Yeah, I don't see it either. Okay. 
Well, I got the arrow on my chart, but not on the uh, dashboard. Oh, you're on UJ, my friend. Al? And UJ is starting to come back again to... Uh, had, I like this little wick right here. It came back down, couldn't hold it. Myers came in. And I think it's probably going to drive it up. I'm still pretty comfortable with this trade. Yeah, we didn't get a great entry on it. But the moving average is held. It, it could penetrate it, but now you got that nice little wick right here. I like that part. That's a good sign that this thing is uh, not done going up. Moving averages are holding. And this is the area right here where we had the move up, formed a new zone, came back down, retested this little area. So right here, this little spot right in here is probably going to find some, and that's probably why it's been struggling right at this point. Strong move down. This is the origin of the strong move down. Now it's coming back up to retest this area right here. If it can break through this, it's going to come up and retest that one. If it struggles through this zone right in here, then you may want to just get out and take whatever profits you can get. And let's see. This little area right in here, I could be a problem. Oops, don't want to change that. Okay, yeah, right where the uh, started creating those uh, those wicks, right? Yep. Did you see the um, the Q and A section where uh, Xavier mentioned the um, the answer there about the uh, adding an alert in MT four? Let's say no, it isn't. Uh, let me read it here. Thanks, Xavier. Right, right click uh, on the chart. Javier, yeah, hover I, over the trade, and then you can select an alert. Right click on the chart. Let me just try this here. Right click on the chart. Hover over the trading. Oh, this one here. And alert. Here we go. That's it. Bingo. Uh, bingo. Learning new things, man. Yeah, that's what we have. It's nice about these rooms is that. And you do that down in the terminal too, guys. You see the alerts down there in the terminal? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. You that tab and then you just right click anywhere on there. Yeah, you can add you can add alerts. Huh. Great. All right. All right, we just learned something new today. Yep. Been doing that a lot with the cryptos. Well, you can see there's not a whole lot of activity this morning on anything. It's kind of a snoozer here. Yeah, not a heck of a whole lot of excitement this morning for a Monday. Yeah, so Mondays are usually generally slow. Fridays, I mean, I've, I've had some really good trades on Mondays. But there's no reason to force anything. And let's see, what else do we have here? U.S. Swiss, let's take a look at that again. On our alert, while we're still here. U.S. Swiss, we had the alert at 6.45. Downtrend, I like the flat bottom. It actually pretty much broke to the downside. It was a descending wedge. And if you drew the uh, the wedge at the time, here's this, the high, the low, right in this area right here was where they got, where it started showing it was trying to break down. It broke down right here. And it probably would have gotten us to 10 pips. Let's draw this again. 
So here was the alert. Here's the descending part. Let me just take this out of the way. And this is what we would probably would have done back in the arrow days when we were doing iris. And we tuck it in real close to the bottom where the alert was, which would be right about in there. We got the alert. We had the breakout. This is on a five-minute chart. Then we come down over into a one-minute chart, and we would tweak that as best we could. Here is the alert. Run these over as tight as we can. Bring this over as tight as we can. Bring this over to right before you got the alert. Because when the alert was generated, it was the opening of this blue candle right here is where you would have gotten, because the alert's generated at the close of this candle. And so it would be the open of the 645 candle. And we had the break. It broke, closed below, came back, retested it. And now it's kind of following this little moving average down here. It's always easy to see it hindsight. It's not always easy to see it when you're doing it. No, it's a uh, it's a real fact there. But this little area right in here, you see, it had to break. Now this is only one minute, so I mean, when you start getting some of these wedge alerts, you get down to the one minute charts. It's uh, it can really kind of whipsaw you quite a bit. But here's the close. Here was the trend. Here's the trend. You had the alert. Had the breakout. Came back up. Retest. Actually went back into the wedge a little bit. Came back down. Broke. This would have been the primary entry right there to get in at this point. Hey guys. Yes. Take a look at uh, Euro Kiwi for a bank induction strategy 10. Euro so, Kiwi. Bank. Hmm. We, may, we may be missing it as I speak. It's Euro Kiwi right here. Uh, let's see. Let's bring us down to see where we're at here. We're in a downtrend. There's the arrow coming down, came back up. So would this be one that we have to wait for it to come back down, retest it again? No, bank induction, you know, you take the candle right after the, you know, so you have the upward arrow into the, the resistance. Here's a, so here was the. So that's the bank induction theoretically right there where the arrow is pointing right right up okay. into the resistance and now it's bounced off of it and it's heading back down in, in our direction. Look at how Sorry. it's hurt. We may be missing it already though. This is on a, what time frame we at? We're on a 15 five minute. minute. Yeah, 15, 15 minute. 15 minute. Now do we have to wait for that candle to close or we just take it on the, uh, on the out of it? The, the, the bank induction strategy 10, you take it right now theoretically. Well, let's do it. Yeah, because so. we're kind of late, right? You would have taken it on the yeah, previous candle. That's that's why I'm hesitating, Alice, because this you can or you can see it already happening. Um, we're, we've missed a little bit. We're getting in at a, not the best price, but we still have to. You still want to be getting it once it leaves the red the zone, right? Yep. Because right now we don't know if it would come back into the zone or not. We go to a five minute chart. Let's see what that does. Yeah, I like I I think I like that one short, man. And let's see Euro New Zealand. Let's see what that looks like here. Euro New <coughs> Zealand. New Zealand is strong on and the Euro. Not a whole lot of spread between the Euro and New Zealand, though. You know, New Zealand, modify. There's only 20 pips right there. That's a nice little area for it to come back for a target. It's got to get through this move. Oh, you're getting some consolidation on the moving averages right in here.
if we get a close above these moving averages, then I'd be looking at maybe getting out of this thing. But right now, as long as it stays inside the red zone and doesn't break out of the other side, I'll be okay with my stop being where it is. I said, just because you have a 40 pip stop doesn't mean you have to take the full stop out. Basically, if you expect a trade to go in a certain direction and it doesn't do it within a timely fashion, then that means something's probably wrong. You need to uh, reassess and uh, and conquer. And USGN on a buy. I think that's what we already have a buy on that one. We're already in that trade. So like that's a good another, sign. Looks like we got another alert for that one. Yeah, I didn't get that one. Uh, wait a second. Let me open that up a little wider. USCN? Um Well, I've got too many pairs open. Uh, no, I didn't get it. Huh. This is the one where we have, we got in it already. We got in a way back. Well, that was on a five-minute chart, I think, is what we ended up kind of taking that one on. So, hey, Matt. Yeah, man. One thing I'm sort of noticing is if you have a chart open, yeah, that sometimes seems to cancel out the dashboard's ability to show that signal. Because I got a trade alert, but that was because I'm already in that trade and I have the chart open. Hmm. So I got the alert from the chart, but the dashboard didn't populate maybe because I had that chart already open. That's Just interesting. Something okay. to look at. I'm not sure that that's true or not, but in this case, that's what happened apparently. Okay. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll note that down. Well, I'm still okay with this US yen trade. It's actually uh, only three pips out of uh, break even. Still has room to the upside. Dollar is still relatively strong, so the dollar was trading to the strength of the dollar. It's getting stronger as we get closer to the US market opening. And we are in an uptrend. We're starting to get a little sharper turn on this uh, on this trend line. We have here's the anchor, here's the hit, here's the hit. This one came down, couldn't quite, so we have a little bit higher trend on this. This is indicating with, with that W, that's what Pepper was bringing to our, to our attention. Had a nice move down. It didn't really get into the zone. Pulled back up, retested the trend line, broke, closed above the point of the W, the midpoint of the W, closed above, and then we have a nice little trend going on up. You can see where just sort of the, the angle sort of is changing angles a little bit.
Any other questions before we start wrapping this thing up? There's nothing. No. It's been a slow, slow morning. Let's see if there's anything in the chat box that we should be aware of here. I think the fact with daylight savings in Europe is two hours. Uh, they're still, it's even earlier for them. It's early for us, but it's even earlier for them. A lot of people didn't realize, especially the Europeans may not realize we're having daylight savings time already. And Uh, yes, Justin, I've been known to put a shot of bourbon and uh, honey in my tea in the morning. Well, not in the morning, but in the evening, especially. Guys, I got to hop off. Okay, I think we're about ready to wrap this thing up. There's nothing much going on today here. Yeah. And I think it's uh, probably a good day to just uh, let the charts do what they do and come back tomorrow. Yep, tomorrow will be our day. Thanks a lot. So thank All you right, for, thanks, thank, guys. CB. Thanks, CB. Yep, I think we're just going to go ahead and wrap this thing up today, and uh, we'll could try again tomorrow, same time, seven thirty to nine. Any other last questions before we uh, end up heading on our merry way for the day? Actually, there's just one thing in the chat um, from Javier, I guess. Matt, you might want to mention this to Nate. I've seen this more than from one of our traders saying that the only time they'll get an alert is if they actually have that chart clicked on or opened. Hmm. Which is kind of odd. He, this isn't the first time I'm seeing this. That's why I'm mentioning it right now. Yeah, I would, no, think, I would think you'd. I would think you'd have to have the chart at least uh, minimized on the uh, chart. To, well, if you just have it in your uh, um, market watch list. I don't think you'd get the alerts, but if I think you'd have to have a chart at least open and minimized. Yeah, it needs to be running on that pair. Yeah. He's saying even if I'm not looking at a pair, I won't receive an alert unless I physically click the pair. Hmm. That's weird. Okay. And he's not the only one, like I said. I've heard this before. Yeah, no, that's uh that's valid. It's worth looking into. I just don't uh Let's go find out where that comment is. I'm going to go screenshot it so I can. Yeah. And Pepper, no, the next arrow meeting, the one after this is Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. That's Dante's. And there was some, oh, I'd probably, there was some talk about uh, working with uh, the Trade Masters uh, group was looking at uh, doing something starting this week, but we're going to postpone that. Uh, so more, more of that to come for anybody that's in the Trade Masters group. Uh, we'll, we'll keep looking for the announcements on, on that. And on that note, I think we'll wrap it up for the day. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. It's been a slow day, but so kind of a, it, it's a Monday morning. Yep. So tomorrow, hopefully things will be a little bit more active, and we'll see everybody then. Take care, and uh, thanks for coming in, and we'll see everybody tomorrow. Take care, everyone. See you all, all right. tomorrow. Thanks a lot.